Hey everyone, welcome to the second video for section 9.5. So this video we're just going to do an example of the predator-prey models, work out the details, and show you how you actually do get the center out of everything with actual numbers instead of the variables we had before. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So the example we're going to look at is this one. dx dt equals 2x minus 0.5xy dy dt equals minus y plus 0.1xy. So where are the critical points for this system? So the critical points are, well obviously we have the x equals zero, y equals zero point. And then we have the other one, where if I factor out an x here, this is x times two minus 0.5 y, and this is y times 0.1 x minus one. So the other point we see we're gonna get is that x equals 10 and y equals four. So now let's calculate our Jacobian matrix. So the Jacobian matrix is going to be, in terms of x's and y's, 2 minus 0.5y minus 0.5x, 0.1y minus 1 plus 0.1x. So if I plug in the origin, j of 0, 0 is going to be 2, 0, 0, minus 1. This is my saddle that I knew I was going to get at this point. If I plug in my other point, my 10, 4, j of 10, 4, is going to be 0, minus 5, point 0.4, 0, which is going to be my center. Now let's actually figure out the center here, so we're going to actually drive the equations for this. So let's go ahead and drive this out. So this, if I find the character's equation, I'm going to get an r squared plus 0, minus 2 for being my points, because this is going to be the determinant of negative r minus 5, 0.4 negative r. So I get r squared in the diagonal, and then I get a minus 2 from this, which means a plus 2, because it's going to be a minus minus 2. A lot of negatives there. Which means r squared equals minus 2, r equals plus or minus root 2i. And now let's figure out the actual equation. So if I now plug root 2i into this, I get root 2, I'm plugging in minus root 2i, why not? Minus 5, 0.4, root 2i, x1, x2 equals 0. So I get root 2i minus 5, root 2i x1 minus 5 x2 equals 0, 0.4 x1 minus plus root 2i x2 equals 0. So these equations are going to be redundant, and so if I work on this, this tells me that what do I get for my vector? I have a vector that is going to be, if I take 5x1 and then i root 2x2, this will be an eigenvector for eigenvalue minus root 2i. Because if I take 5, x1 to be 5 and x2 to be i root 2, those, that term goes to 0. So now let's go ahead and solve out for actually general solution using this method. So then the complex solution is 5i root 2 e to the i root 2 minus i root 2 t. So expanding this out, I get 5i square root of 2 times cosine of root 2 t minus i sine of root 2 t. And now if I do distribution and everything, I'm going to see that I get, for the real parts, I get a 5 cosine of root 2t and a root 2 sine of root 2t. And then plus imaginary part of negative sine of root 2t times 5 and a root 2 cosine of root 2t. So then my general solution is x of t, x vector of t is going to be c1 5 cosine root 2 t root 2 sine of root 2 t plus c2 negative 5 sine of root 2 t root 2 cosine of root 2 t. So what this means is my population of prey x of t is going to be 5 c1 cosine of root 2t minus 5c2 sine of root 2t. And my predator population is going to be 
root 2 c1 sine of root 2 t plus root 2 c2 cosine of root 2 t. So we're getting periodic of period 2 pi over root 2, which is what we expected because the period should be 2 pi over root of a times c. In this case, we had a was 2 and c was 1, so this should be 2 pi over root 2, which is what we expected. And then the predator is going to lag. The predator is going to lag behind. We would see that once we convert these into a single um, sine or cosine function, based on choosing c1 and c2. So this is going to be the same stuff we did with the springs and stuff, converting things into a single sine and cosine function. And then predator lags behind. You can also see it right away because terms that match are a cosine to a sine. The sine lags behind that, and then minus sine to cosine. Cosine lags behind a minus sine term. So we see the main features we wanted to see out of the solution just by deriving it fully with these numbers that we get here. And then you would pick C1 and C2 based on initial conditions. And now remember, as a point that I almost forgot, that this X of T here, it's this oscillating around the equilibrium point. So this should be here plus 10 and plus 4. Because these are equilibrium values, right? Because we set up our thing to be we localize around the equilibrium point, linearize there, and see what happens. So we need to add that back in at the end to get to the right actual solutions. And so we're going to pick C1 and C2 based on those conditions, i.e. x of 0 satisfies 5C1 is 5C1 plus 10, and y of 0 is root 2C2 plus 4. Because the sine terms vanish at t equals 0. All right, so that's the idea for this predator prey model. Now, the main things I want to point out for this end of this video is how you should know how to do these problems. So while we have these direct formulas for the predator prey model and the community species model, you should be able to do this for any nonlinear system I give you, assuming it's like you know reasonable enough to handle. So you should know the methods here, not just the results. I would say there's a decent chance that if you see something on an exam, it's not going to be exactly one of these problems. So you should know how to get the results and how you can get the results for a different system as opposed to just knowing that the results here are what they are. So as long as you know how to do this sort of analysis with the Jacobian and determining what kind of equilibrium point you have at each spot, that's really the key points you need to know to be able to handle these sorts of problems that you see in the exam because they're probably not going to be exactly this model because that would be kind of boring. So if you know how to do the methods, then you'll be in good shape for doing the problems on the exam. All right, that's it for this video in this section. Um, the next, we'll have two more sections to cover. They should be, only be one video each, um, and they're going to be just the the last two sections of the book, where there's sort of other topics, other things that you can see for nonlinear systems that don't show up in linear systems, and how we can approach them and see what's going on. That's it for this one. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.